I've just performed a final check of the alignment of the new panels. Now I wanted to do that so I can actually screw them in place. Um, that will make it easier for me to do the repairs on the transmission tunnel. I've already got some patches cut for that but I need the position of the floor so i am uh, spent hours rechecking the alignment. I'm pretty sure it's spot on or within a millimetre. The, um, you know, the key points at the back there and also the, the um, reaction plate area. Now what I've done to make sure that the front is right is to actually reassemble the engine frames um, and so the engine frames are, <coughs> are in the new floor section obviously in the existing floor section on the other side um, position the reaction plate between and put the bolts in so I know everything lines up and the bolts are, are nipped up so it's providing a um, a tight clearance uh, between the between the rail and the and the reaction plate. I've put the other two bolts in here, and what that does is to make sure that the um, everything is fitting properly. Now, if when I put the reaction plate in and didn't put those in. I found that they actually wouldn't align with the holes. So I've made sure that once I'm certain this is in the right position and I start welding things, when it comes to reassembling the car, everything is going to fit. I'm not going to find that um, you know I'm struggling to get the um, the lock bolts in there. So anyway, everything is in position. The um, panel fits not too bad. A little bit of problem with this panel here. Uh, a little bit of modification on the, the way it was made. Not much, very minor. But um, just about ready to, as I say, put some screws in to hold it in position. The uh, position of the gearbox mounts is, is right at all lined up um, properly once uh, I got the floor lined up everything went in smoothly so I'm pretty sure that uh, it's as close as I can get it without a, a very very uh, precision jig and uh, if anything it's probably uh, not too far off um, why it was made so I'm quite happy with that so at this stage I'll just do some final checks and then I'll put a few, uh, I've got a couple of uh, screws in already, but I'll put a few more in just to hold it in position so I don't have to use these clamps. Uh, and the other reason for not using the clamps is once I know the, the exact position, I'll screw it in so it actually can't move out of position. So anyway, everything's lining up uh, pretty well. I've been working on the bell housing panel that I've got to repair. I've, I've finished fitting this. It's not welded in yet. Um, what I've got to do now is to work out how much of this panel I'm going to replace. Probably down to about here. But the wedge of course that will be replaced. The um, side section I have the side of the transmission tunnel I have a new piece there to go in now that needs to be cut and fitted at the, the rear end here this is too long so I've got to trim that but I can't do that till I've got the correct positioning of this panel and that's why I've fitted the, um, the gearbox cover now it took me an hour to actually remove all the dents out of that. Um, had quite a few dents here and there around the edges and, and this front flange here was 
all bent out of shape so that's been straightened but um, what I'm doing is working out the correct position for the cover which will then give me the correct position for this so this panel moves in and out because there's nothing to hold it straight this was all bent now I've done a, a rough job of, of knocking that out at this stage but it's still not quite the right shape now I'll just go around the other side of the car what I'm doing is positioning this top cover now what's happened I mentioned in the last update is all of this has been pushed backwards and you can see you might not be able to see I can see there's a bit of an elongation in the hole and the reason for that is that to get the the self tapper in I actually had to force that forward and just squeeze the the nut into or the self tapper into the the captive um, screw so that where that scribe is that should be the the actual center of the hole so it's about a quarter of an inch push backwards now the reason for that is that as I mentioned in the last update is that this panel is all out of shape well you can see it's definitely out of shape here and it's pushing all of this back so that just needs to push forward and then even that is just pushed backwards about a quarter of an inch so I've got to I was hoping I've only had to straighten one side but I've actually now got to straighten this so I can get the position of this right so, so it only needs to go forward so I can force it forward you might be able to see the panel flexing so it's got to go forward like that when I've got this positioned on the holes on this side then I'll know that this top panel here this one is in the right position and that will give me the shape of this side panel and the location point for the for the new transmission side now I've got another one to go into there so I've got replacements but I want to make sure it's in the right position so I'll do that um, work on this to get this straight position that then I'll work on the new repair pieces for the other side now it's taken two hours of panel beating to straighten this out to some semblance of shape the um, air conditioning hole now is almost round but the main main thing I was after was the fit of the transmission cover it now fits center of all the holes there's no um, piece there to catch the thread on the, on those two but there centre, that one there is almost centre but that's the piece that I've actually got to re-weld in so I'm not worried about that at this stage so it's now in the right position and I can start to fabricate the the rest of the, <coughs> the side panel which is basically this one on the other side and the wedge so I'll do that now Update on progress on the right hand side of the car. I've been working on the, the bulkhead here or the transmission tunnel and uh, I've replaced, well not replaced, I've repaired this section, that section and also the wedge. Um, everything's lined up. It, um, I haven't welded anything in yet. I've um, been waiting till I've actually got all the pieces in place. This panel just got a little bit of tweaking to fit. It fits okay, just needs to align it a little, little bit more. The um, closing panel at the at the end here, this one. I've got to do a little bit of fitting for that. It's uh, almost there, but it's uh, 
just a little bit out of shape so I need to just fix that there's not much effort in that just looking inside the car I've just got the, the door frame on there for the moment I haven't finished repairing that so there are the repairs inside everything now is lined up the air conditioner drain hole I've actually panel beaded that out so that's um, um, well, much better than it was the, um, the bracket I've welded back on I've made sure that the transmission cover fits everything lines up with the holes now which it wasn't doing before I've got the a new side here which I won't be putting in at this stage that'll go in later and I've started to there's a light there started to look at repairing at least this side of the transmission tunnel um, that's not fitted yet it's um, just um, I've cut it out to the required shape that I want and I've just got to trim just in around this edge to make sure it fits in so I can tack it in with some welds um, the, just cleaned up the outside of the tunnel there I've also done the inside of the tunnel at least on this side and I've used vinegar I think I've mentioned before I use vinegar like a little vinegar bath I drop parts in and a bit like this, this one in the vinegar bath uh, a bit hard to drop the car in so uh, thinking about it what I did with the inside of the tunnel and it's come up bare steel is to uh, use the vinegar but I've used absorbent paper just normal kitchen paper towels and with the car turned up the other way I've um, wet the towels with vinegar and then covered the, the damp towels with uh, cling wrap you can buy it by the roll, it's not that expensive I just cover it with cling, cling wrap and um, took six days and each day I'd, I'd come out and uh, lift the cling wrap and spray more vinegar on to make sure that the, the cloth stayed damp and um, it removed all the rust so uh, what I'll be doing is you know, certainly on the outside of the car uh, where I can I can do so much with uh, with sanding it but I really need to remove just a little bit of ingrained rust um, it's not not deep but it uh, takes a long time to, to rub it off but uh, I'll just apply the damp um, towels and cover it with cling wrap leave it for about a week and uh, I'll get it back to bare steel so I was quite pleased with that but anyway that's the update at this stage this side is getting close to at least finalising welding the inner sill in um, a little bit of tweaking to do on the bottom of the wedge that won't take long and um, once I've welded the the sill in and also made the repair to this side of the tunnel I'll move to the uh, other side of the car and continue doing the basically what I've done on this side so it's progressing quite well